I can tell. Well, I was going to bed. And anyway, who do you think you are slapping me around like I'll that? I'll slap you around any time I want to. Shut up. Both of you, shut up. Think maybe they got picked up? They'll be here. That man tell, he's smart. All the time working out that job, and then it blows wide up. That's not Frankie's fault. That wouldn't happen again in a hundred years. That squad car prowling right in front of the joint. Dumb watchman. He shouldn't try to get his gun out like that. You didn't kill him. Maybe not. What difference does it make? Pay up the dog with them. I tell you, they'll be here. Frank ain't gonna be licked on this one. I don't know what you're sore about, honey, but I... Will didn't... you take that junk off your face? It's making me sick. Maybe they go right away to the lodge. They wouldn't leave us in the hole. Yeah, sure. Shoulder. It don't tickle. Where's Nip? He ain't. You better sit down, Frank. You don't look so good. Oh, hey, you ruined my couch. So we'll buy you another one. Get some bandages, Evie, and some iodine or something. That job didn't go too good. Nice mess we are in. Yeah. 
What do we do now, Frankie? We'll stay here for a while. Later on, we'll pick up a car and go on up to Bonnie's. Bonnie's going to blow a top when she hears about Nip. Yeah, poor Nip. If it hadn't have been for Nip, we wouldn't be here. Uh, open it up. Let's see how good we did. Oh. circumstances, Mr. Norton, uh, it's absolutely necessary to push the investigation to the limit before we even discuss the settlement. Yes, I understand that. Yes? Mr. Sullivan is here, sir. Tell him to come in. Won't you come in, Mr. Sullivan? Hello, Tom. This is Mr. Norton of the Continental Products Company. How do you do? Dan Sullivan, one of our investigators. Mr. Norton? You'll be hearing from us, Mr. Norton. Well, thank you, I certainly hope so. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Well, I understand we have the misfortune to be carrying insurance on the Continental payroll. Yeah. How are we doing? Moving pretty fast. Got a job for it. Correct. Right. It's a lead from our eastern office. It's beginning to develop. The dead bandit was identified by the police as a man named Nip Powers. He's one of the five-man eastern gang headed by a bird named Frankie Mantell. Mantell? Never heard of him. They only trip once. 1941, nightclub robbery. Five of them got five years, were paroled a year ago, and promptly disappeared. Until the other night. There's absolutely nothing to tie the gang to the Continental robbery, other than the fact that Powers was once one of them. Well, that's a good enough meat. Got one now that may be even better. Powers had a sister. She lived here in town while the gang was in prison. But eight months ago, she moved to Alaza. Alaza? What's that? Oh, little town in the mountains, about 150 miles from here. Sort of a health resort. What's she doing up there? We don't know. Just got the information today. But I want you to find the girl if she's still there. Find out what she's doing. Maybe she went there for her health. Maybe not. So you hang around and find out. But we can't waste any time, Dan. All right. I'll be there tonight. Well, not to make it too easy, Tom. What's the lady's name? Bonnie. Bonnie Powers. Bonnie Powers. Kind of a pretty name. She probably smokes cigars. Dr. Wagner? No, I'm Dr. Kelly. I'm just sitting in for Dr. Wagner while he's on vacation. Oh, in that case, I'm not sure you can help me. Oh, I don't know. They predicted great things for me at medical school. Sit down. I'm looking for a young lady. Who isn't? Strictly business. Since most people come to Eliza for their health, I figure Doc Wagner should know everybody in town. Oh, he does. He's been here for 40 years. Her name is Bonnie Powers. Never heard of her. Wait a minute, I'll look. Well, here she is. Bonnie Powers, age 25. Maybe I ought to know her. Is her address there? High Pines Lodge, wherever that is. Ask around town, somebody will know. I'll find it. Thanks very much for your trouble. Don't mention it. Say, wait a minute. I'm going into business myself in a couple of weeks. Here's my card. As a matter of fact, take a whole bunch of them. You'll be traveling around to kind of pass them out. <laughs> Doc Wagner might as well retire with you in town. Oh, he is, in two months. By that time, I want everybody in town to know about me. Well, I'm sure they will, Doc. But if you need any brass bands, let me know. I can get one for you cheap. Thanks, I'll do that.
Joey. I had to drive the Beasleys down to the station. What's the matter, Joey? Good evening. You've been pretty hard to find. Yes. You miss Powers? That's right. Well, I've been looking for this place for quite a long time. Oh, this is wonderful. Just the kind of a spot where a man can get a real rest. How did you hear about High Pines? Oh, well, I heard about it in town. I had a little trouble finding your road, though. It's really secluded. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I have bad news for you. I'm closing the lodge for the season. Well, they told me it was open all year round. Not anymore. Well, I suppose I should have known. This was too good to be true. <laughs> Wait a minute, it'll probably take you a little while to get the place locked up. Couldn't I stay until then? I'll be no I'm trouble. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't. I... I'll tell you, I, I might be able to put you up for a day or so. Fine. I'm uh, selling the lodge. I expect the new buyers any day. You can stay until then. Well, I hope they get lost on the road. <laughs> Joey, take the gentleman's bags to room 203. Also put the car in the garage. Here's the ignition key. You'll have to leave as soon as the new buyers arrive. I'll have to do inventory and all that. Well, even a couple of days would be better than nothing. You might not even get that. Pussyfoot foot around, here's all I can stand. What do you want? Oh, nothing. You look lonesome. I thought maybe you'd like to talk. Don't start making wolf noises. I'm not that lonesome. <laughs> I, I didn't know my fangs were showing. I'm sorry for that crack. I, I guess I am pretty jumpy. No thanks, Joey. The bar's fine. Well, I don't blame you for being jumpy with that character looking around. Joey? He's harmless. <laughs> you underestimate your attraction. You know, the, the way you say that, it... Sounds nice. Not fresh like other men. You must know the wrong men. I've been unlucky that way. <laughs> I don't know why. Here I am talking to you and I have a lot to do. Do you have other guests? Only two. They're leaving in the morning. Good night. Good night. Oh, uh, 
I'm sorry again for that cheap crack. Okay. Okay. We'll take care of him. What you're trying to do, make a play for him? I don't want that guy dying here. Why don't you get him a doctor? Get that slug out of the poison. I'll poison you if you don't shut up. She's right. We gotta get you to a doc, Frankie. Sure. Name one. Yeah, the only two we know are in a pen. Well, I don't want him dying here. You guys think you can cut him here? <coughs> <coughs> Give me a cigarette, will you? I don't feel so good. Get a car. We gotta get to Bonnie. Okay, Frankie. We gotta get to Bonnie. Good morning. Who are you? You staying here? That's right. Arrived last night. Take my advice, brother, and get right out again. Why? What's wrong with the place? Oh, just people that can't talk. A girl that don't know what she's doing. You'll be lucky if you don't have to cook your own meals. Well, I understand she's selling the place. That's why everything's so disruptive. Selling the place? Mm -hmm. That's the first we've heard of it. She's been trying to get us out for a couple of weeks. Well, we're leaving. <laughs> Don't toot at me, you bumbling moron. We're coming. Goodbye, Mr. Uh... Goodbye, Mr. Good morning. Good morning. Your coffee and eggs are on the table. What? I'm amazed. I understood the service here was terrible. You've been talking to the Beasley. <laughs> Those people didn't seem to know about your selling the lodge. Well, they were leaving anyway. I, I didn't tell them. Sit down and keep me company. Have you had your breakfast? Yeah, but I'll have another cup of coffee. Good. By the way, where's the telephone in the lodge? There isn't any. It's, it's been disconnected. You've calmed down. Yeah. Yeah. You must have settled those weighty problems on your mind last night. Um, I just remembered something. Excuse me, please. I'll, I'll see you later. I, uh, I thought we might go for a walk tonight. 
I'll see. That's a wonderful night. I hoped it would be like this. We better be getting back. I shouldn't stay away so long. No, it's still early. Tell me a little about yourself. Where do you come from? Michigan. Hmm. Family still there? No. Any brothers, sisters? There's nothing worth telling about me. How'd you happen to come to this place? For my health. I needed a mountain climate. Did you have to buy high pines to get in? Oh, I... I wanted to go into business. What about you? Where do you come from? A little town down the coast. Is it a pretty town? Yes, I guess it is. It must be wonderful to live in a town like that. With family and friends and go to parties. Those things aren't hard to get. If you really want them. I've wanted them all my life and I've never gotten them. I've really got to get back. Joey, what are you doing out here? Thanks for coming with me. I enjoyed it. Maybe tomorrow night? I don't know. Don't count on it. Boyfriend, Barney. When did you get here? Who's the boyfriend? Frankie will be interested. He's upstairs. Frankie. Where's Nip? Things got jammed up. We got into a shooting. He's dead. He was lucky. He's better off than all of us. Who were you out with just now? Yes. I couldn't get rid of him. You sure couldn't. We found this in your guest's room. Now we got more trouble on our hands thanks to you. But why? He's leaving right away. He ain't going no place. You stupid dame, he's probably a copper. Oh no, Frankie! He's not a copy, he's a doctor. A doctor? Ain't that fate, Frank. Oh, Frank, don't get him mixed up in this. He's a nice guy. Maybe I'm a nice guy, too. And I need a doctor. Get him in here. Something wrong? Yes, I... I know who you really are. How'd you find out? I saw you throw your cards in the fireplace. I picked one of them out. That was very careless of me. I'm sorry I tried to fool you. I need your help. A man's hurt. One of the buyers I told you about. He's hurt badly. Well, you better get a doctor from the village. You'll do, Doc. Come on.
I should have figured you were no pug ugly. What kind of an accident did you have? I got a slug in my shoulder. It's infected. You gotta fix me up. Uh, there's nothing I can do for you. I uh, haven't any equipment here. You better get the doctor in town. We're not holding a medical convention. You gotta fix me up yourself. Gotta get some stuff from the doctor in town. Louie can handle it. Well, you boys do what you want. I'm going to my room. What for, Doc? Your gun? Why do you carry a heater? Expect to run into trouble? I always carry a gun when I travel. Where's the doc's office in town? In his house on Maple Street. There's a sign in front. Get in, get the black bag and some bandages. What else? He wouldn't know what I was talking about anyway. What else you need? Alcohol, ether, iodine, anything else you can find. Okay, don't mess it up. Don't worry, this doctor will never know you lost anything. Okay, Doc. We'll wait in here. Wait a minute, baby, where are you going? Come here. Frankie, don't make him do it. Let him go away from here. We'll make out, all right? Don't be crazy. He'd have the cops here in an hour. Oh, no, he would not if I asked him. He wouldn't. If you ask him, isn't that friendly? What's been going on? Nothing. He's just a nice guy. He's the first guy I ever met that treated me like I was nice, too. What about me, baby? Don't I treat you nice? What's the matter? Don't you want me to lick this? Oh, yeah, sure I do, Frankie. Okay. The doctor's the only guy that can keep me rolling. Stick with me, honey. Stick with me. in the world not to have done this to you. Who is he? Frankie Mintel. How did he get shot? Hold up. My brother was killed. You knew they were coming here? Yeah. This was to be their hideout? Yes. That's why I didn't want you to What's the hush-hush all about? Sit down, Doc. I can't keep an eye on you and the cards at the same time. Sit down. You're scaring me to death. I hope you know your stuff, Doc. Yeah. We wouldn't want anything to happen to the boss. We've been together a long time. I'd hate to break up a beautiful friendship. Okay, you're playing. Here's a ten of hearts. Where's your peanut? Louie ought to be getting back. Go 
Come on, Doc. We're in business. Frankie. Hmm? Frankie, wake up. Those guys in that village leave the windows wide open. See if they got everything you need, Doc. Iodine, sulfur powder, alcohol, bandages, tape. There's no ether. I can't take that bullet out of you without an anesthetic. You'd never stand the pain. Well, where's the ether? I didn't see any ether around. What's that? Pantheloton. What's it in English? Sleeping pills. Okay. Put me to sleep. You know, Doc, I ain't so sure you're going to do your best for me. I didn't ask for the job. So I'm going to make sure you do your best, Doc. If anything happens to me, something happens to you. Frankie. You got that? If I don't make it, this guy don't leave here alive. That's the word, Frankie. Well, what's he done to you, Frankie? He's trying to help you. Why do you have to get these crazy ideas? He'd help you, all right. So I'm going to make sure that he helps me. How long does it take these pills to lock me out? Four pills, a few minutes, maybe an hour. Maybe longer if your chums keep gabbing here with you. Okay, move out, boys. But remember what I say. The duck goes if I go. That's the word. I've been thinking this isn't so good. The doctor finds the stuff gone in the morning, the sheriff be looking all over the country. He's got to take the gamble. By the time anybody thinks of coming up here, the bullet will be out of Frankie and we'll be a thousand miles away. Now, this whole job has been a hex. A car wreck, Nipstead, Frankie there, fire nut. He's out, Doc. I can't work with you three hanging around. Get out. I think we better keep an eye on you. Keep an eye on me from downstairs. You want him to live? Don't bother me. I guess he's right. I guess we better wait downstairs. Good luck, Doc. So jumpy, Louis. You're getting under my skin. It's my own skin I'm thinking about. We've got to get away from this place. How'd it go? The bullets are. 
that the infection spreads into his bloodstream, there's nothing anybody can do. Well, what's the pitch now? What do we do? We wait. See what happens. Here, you need this. Thanks. I sure do. Thanks again for what you did. I didn't have much choice. Why are you so concerned about a guy like that? That's what I've been asking myself. Well, why are you? Because he's my husband. I married him when I was 17. You didn't know he was a crook? No. He was with my brother. They had money, but I thought it was legitimate. Mm -hmm. Things I'd never had before. I thought he was well. You're still stuck with him after you knew he was a crook? Yeah. I was still in love with him, I thought. And then when he was caught and sent to prison, I, I couldn't just toss him over. I said I'd wait for him. Still love him? No. Then why do you go on helping him? He's still my husband. What about Joey? Is he a member of the gang, too? Frankie hired him a couple of months ago. He seemed like the kind of guy to have around. One who can't talk. <sighs> you afraid he might turn you all in? You can write notes, you know. He wouldn't do anything to get me in trouble. He follows me around like a big watchdog. Keeps an eye on you, all right. I told you before. I only attract the wrong kind. Do me a favor. Sure, baby. You're pretty bad off, Frankie. I want you to pull out of it. But if something should happen, why take it out on somebody that tried to help you? Now we're back to that again. Tell them to let them alone no matter what happens to you. You're awfully worried about that guy. He used to worry about me. Maybe you're in love with him now. People like me have got no business falling in love with decent guys. Thanks. The order still goes. If something happens to me, something happens to the duck. Don't forget it.
How long before Frankie will be able to travel? Two or three weeks. Weeks? That's no good. You can't stay here two or three weeks. Yeah, that ain't so good. What do you think about Mantel? Will he live? I told you, I don't know. We just wait. There's nothing else to do for it. Well, if I was you, Doc, I'd be doing some praying for him. Hey, big head. How about some breakfast, huh? Hey, you! Stupid! What do you mean walking away from me? Who do you think you are? Joey! You better let me fix that back, Joey. Where do you think you're going? I'm going upstairs to get a shower and a shave. It's a morning habit I got into several years ago. You better get some iodine and a bandage for Joey's back. Your friends here have been using it for a dartboard. It's four o'clock. He's been burning with fever all day. When's it supposed to go down? And it wears itself out. I told you the infection was bad. Why wouldn't they see the doctor? That's what we'd like to know. It could have been a criminal, you know, or someone who couldn't see a doctor legitimately. I didn't know there were any criminals in Alaza. Oh, well, as far as we know, there aren't. Could be somebody on the way through from someplace. Yes, I suppose so. This lodge is located in about the most isolated place in the world. It would be a swell place for somebody wanting to hide out. Yes, I guess it would be. <laughs> However, none of my guests are wounded criminals, Sheriff. No. But if you care to take a look around... Oh, no. We just thought we'd come up and have a look-see. Of course, there was a chap, a stranger in town the other day, uh, asking about you. For me? Uh, what did he look like? A uh, young fellow, blonde, good-looking. He asked for me by name? Yes, the hotel told him that you ran this place out here. Oh, yes. It must have been this friend of mine. He heard I moved to Alaska and he came to see me. <laughs> Well, if anyone shows up acting suspicious, or if they're hurt, why, you get in touch with the front of Oh, right don't now. worry, Sheriff, I certainly will. And we'll come up occasionally to see that you're all right. Oh, well, that won't be necessary. I'm sure I'll be perfectly all right. Well, you never can tell, Miss Powers. Somebody needing medical supplies is loose, and he may be dangerous. We'll keep an eye on you up here. Goodbye. It sounded a little too easy. He'll be back. It's okay. Well, he wants to handle him good. Come on, Doc. Let's let him rest. It's 
smart girl. You told him good. You heard what that sheriff said. Come back to keep an eye on here. You've got to get out. Ah, uh, he won't be back for a couple of days. We'll just stay out of sight when he comes again. Next time he'll be here, say, let's see your people staying here. Maybe you'll want to take a look upstairs next time. Next time, maybe nothing. Stop your belly aching. You make me nervous. I make me nervous staying here. We had to get far away or pretty soon be right back in the pen. We can't get out of here till Frankie is ready to go. And when will that be? He won't be ready to move for a long time yet. If you wait, we all get caught. Mattel wouldn't wait. Mattel would save his own neck. What are you getting at, Louis? Let Mattel stay. We go. It's his bad luck he got shot, not mine. No, we both had bad luck, eh, Louis? I never did trust that guy. Get him back upstairs. Folks dead. Well, Frankie shoots for the gut. He don't miss. Frankie? <laughs> you know, this will probably kill you. We're going out at midnight. Doc comes along. I tell you, you're crazy. Have you ever heard of shock? You won't have a chance to leave you moving tonight. We'll put it out at midnight. Well, I'm not responsible. I'm not... Shut up. He says we're moving out. You're coming along. Come on, do something. Look, he's bleeding like a pig again. Look at that bandage. You too, beat it. We gotta get rid of Louie. He's a smart guy, Doc. over here in Martinsville by 6 in the morning. How far is that? Mm, about 360 miles. Looks like wide open country. They probably never hear enough in there. Man, tell will be dead before you get there. You can see that he won't, Doc. Don't you understand that, Doc? I, I think we're going to wait till that sheriff comes nosing back here again. We're pulling out tonight. All of us. Yeah, and you shove your gear back in your throat from here on in. Give me some more coffee. I said give me some more coffee! Ground beef. Take it easy, Biggie. We got jumpier than Louie was. Hey, we can take 70 here, all the way through to 361. Going 
any place. We fixed that broken down taxi cab of his and your car too. You're not playing with morons, Stark. Now get upstairs and tend to Frankie. We're leaving in an hour. about me in town. I still don't know what you're talking about. The sheriff said a man who looks like you was in a lousy the other day asking about me. How did you know my name? What did you want with me? I stopped in the gas station outside of town. I asked the man if he knew of a hotel or a resort in the mountains nearby. He said he'd heard of a Miss Powers who ran a lodge somewhere in the vicinity. So when I got to the hotel, I asked if anyone knew you and where your lodge was. I didn't know I was that well known. He's not breathing. He's dead. Oh, the future. I certainly tried. Oh, what do we do? They'll be coming for him right away. They'll kill you as soon as they find out. Hey, what's going on in there? What are you doing with the door lock? Keep quiet. I gave him some more sleeping pills. I want him knocked out when we move him. I gotta get in there. Unlock the door. As soon as he's asleep. I'll call you. We're bringing the car around. Hunt the packet. Better start getting Frankie ready. As soon as he's asleep. Now let us alone. There's mine, his, Louis. Those other two can't be carrying them off. I'll look in their room. Maybe I can find one. Get me a gun. We've got a chance.
Okay, Doc, open the door. I told you not to bother him until you were ready to go. We're ready to go. He's in no condition to be moved. We're gonna move him, Doc. Get him ready right away. I'll be back. What are we going to do? They're coming right up. We'll go out the window. We? Help me get the bed sheets off. Going out the window won't do any good. We have to gamble on losing the mountains. But the mountain falls off in a straight drop all around. Okay. All right, then we'll try the road. The road's 15 miles. We couldn't get a mile before they'd catch us. Can't use it now. Uh. That guy had a gun. So he had a gun. I'm gonna work this light. Take a walk. We don't have a chance. We do if you can draw their attention away from here while I get that gun. Oh. Make your way at the other side of the lodge. And throw a rock as far as you can away from here. All right. Find a boulder and stay behind it.
You're right there, both of you. Kick it over. Bonnie, you all right? Bonnie! Yes, I'm all right. Go and pick up the money. This one happened to the gun. Very clever. I found oh, you. Well, what do you know? He was the boyfriend. Can you drive a car? Yes. Where to? The sheriff's office? Yes. We'll have to wait there for the Los Angeles police. Then you're not a cop yourself? No, I'm an investigator for the insurance company. In the front, Biggie. All right, you. In the back. Sullivan has made a detailed report of the help you gave him, Miss Powers. Under the circumstances, we're going to permit you to stand trial on a minimum charge harboring a criminal. I might also add that this office will request leniency in your case. Thank you. Will you excuse me? Does leniency mean? I don't know. A year at the most. A year to me now is going to seem like a very long time. It'll seem long to me too. 